Big chase ends in South Bear County. Our Katrina Weber tells us how sheriff's deputies were able to catch three people, but one still got away. Today is the first day of early voting. A number of people are registered to cast their ballots in record numbers. What you need to know if you're headed to the polls today. And we're tracking a cold front, which is starting to move into South Texas. This brings cooler temperatures this afternoon. We've got the absolute latest coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Three men seem to have traveled a lot of miles only to end up in jail. Sheriff's deputies caught them in South Bear County after a car chase early this morning. But one man is still on the run. Katrina Weber has that story from where it started. Highway 281 south near Loop 1604. According to the sheriff's office, this started with a couple of looks. A deputy looking and seeing what appeared to be a suspicious car in this parking lot. Then the driver of that car looking at the deputy and taking off. They finally caught up with that car after it crashed in a field on private property along Big Oak Drive, just west of Highway 281 South. Although they had spent a lot of time running and covered a lot of miles, the people in that car ended up practically back where they started just after four this morning. The chase lasted at least 20 minutes, going all the way into Atascosa County and back. At one point, they reached speeds of more than 100 miles per hour, and at times, the suspects headed the wrong way on the highway. After the car crashed, deputies caught three of the people right away, but a fourth one ran away. They blocked off the neighborhood and searched for him. Deputies had to wait until almost daylight to recover the car, which they say was stolen. Investigators believe at least some of that may have been caught on the surveillance cameras here, and they plan to review the video for clues. Reporting from South Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A suspect behind bars and police are crediting a tip from the public in helping them find the suspect. He's accused of robbing a convenience store. Last month, police say 21-year-old Roy Martinez robbed the Shop and Save store in the 7300 block of Marbach Road. According to an arrest report, Martinez showed a gun to the store clerk and then demanded money from the register. Police found Martinez after receiving a tip through Crime Stoppers. Martinez is facing a $75,000 bond. A man recovering after crashing on the southwest side. San Antonio police say the crash happened just before 3 this morning. They tell us a man in his 60s was driving southbound on I-35 near Somerset when he had a medical episode. It caused him to drive in between the lanes. That driver ended up crashing up under a bridge. He was taken to University Hospital. Today is the first day of early voting in our area. Voters can cast their ballots at more than 30 locations across Bear County. Here are some of the stats. More than 1.1 million people are registered to vote in Texas March primaries, which will set a record. Back in 2018 and 2016, more than 900,000 voters were registered. Democrats and Republicans will each have their own separate ballot. We have samples on KSAT.com. Races include candidates running for president, sheriff, and several positions. Get all of the information right now. It's on KSAT.com. Just look under the politics section. And it's not too late to sign up for our Vote 2020 elections newsletter. Each Tuesday, we'll email handpicked coverage aimed at helping you, the voters, better understand the races, candidates, and issues. To sign up, just go to KSAT.com slash newsletters. Democrats are on the campaign trail ahead of the Nevada caucuses, and they're getting ready to hit the debate stage again. This time, the candidates will be joined by former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. ABC's Mona Kozar Abdi has more. Former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg will take the debate stage for the first time tomorrow. The billionaire businessman qualifying for the Las Vegas event after a new NPR PBS poll released this morning showed him polling well above the 10 percent threshold needed and surpassing Joe Biden among Democrat and Democratic leaning independent voters. Michael Bloomberg with 62 billion dollars can buy every ad he wants, but he can't, in fact, wipe away his record on everything from dealing with stop and frisk to his foreign policy. It's a moment his 2020 rivals have been waiting for, many of whom have already criticized Bloomberg for spending $381 million plus dollars of his own money blanketing the airwaves with ads. I can't beat him on the airwaves, but I can beat him on the debate stage. Bloomberg releasing a new online ad just yesterday, taking aim at frontrunner Bernie Sanders, accusing his campaign of fostering negative energy. 
Sanders firing back, bringing up Bloomberg's support for New York's controversial stop and frisk policy. A policy Bloomberg said in a recently released 2015 audio was aimed at putting, quote, a lot of cops where the crime is, which means in minority neighborhoods. Bloomberg has since apologized for the policy's impact. You are certainly not going to win when you have a record in New York City that included racist policies like stop and frisk. Nevada's diverse population is also a big factor in this upcoming contest, with now a major grassroots Latino group backing Sanders with their first ever presidential endorsement. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, Washington. A man spearheads a program that gives out hundreds of books to kids in our community. How the giveaway helps set kids up for success. It's in our latest installment of Creating Black History in SA. And the Spurs getting ready to start their post-rodeo road trip part of the season. And they'll be without one of the guys they had hoped would provide some help this year. San Antonio playing host to a huge tribute to Selena. We have the details on the big announcement just made this morning after the break. The Santicos Charitable Foundation investing thousands of dollars, making sure there's an accurate census count. The organization says that's because the census numbers affect money coming from the federal government. John L. Santicos Charitable Foundation is investing $200,000 in the Complete Count Committee. The foundation says census data will affect federal funding for the next decade and impact budgets for schools, hospitals, Medicare, several other programs that help people as well. New this noon, a major announcement this morning for Selena fans, a tribute concert honoring the Queen of Tejano that will be held in the Alamo Dome on May 9th. Erica Hernandez was at today's announcement and has all the details. Selena 25 años or Selena 25 will be a grand tribute concert here at the Alamo Dome. Suzette Quintanilla, CEO of Q Productions, making the announcement earlier today. The press conference started with the video montage showing all of Selena's accomplishments and Suzette Quintanilla spoke about the importance and ties the city of San Antonio had with Selena and Los Dinos. Other cities did bid on the event, but with San Antonio was home for them. The lineup for the tribute concert will feature many big names, including Pitbull, Becky G, Los Cumbia All-Stars and many more. Suzette talked about the diversity of the lineup of performers. As you can see, there's a diverse um, genre of Latin music, of different artists that are going to be coming to perform. I'm excited about, I'm sure all of you know who they all are. Um, they have, uh, are definitely making history in regards to not just Latin music, but they're all bicultural. Tickets for this concert went on sale at noon and can be bought online at the official event page, selena25.com or the Alamo Dome website. Again, tickets are on sale already and A.B. Quintanilla telling us after the press conference, we can still expect to hear more announcements of more performers participating in this tribute concert as well as some surprises the night of. At the Alamo Dome, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. How big do you think that tribute concert is going to be? It's going to be huge. 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 So. We're looking outside where the sun is out, but maybe not for long. No, I, I don't think we're going to see much sun today. That, that cold front is headed our way. It's starting to work into the hill country now. It's going to bring us some cooler weather by the afternoon. Still, it's warm at the moment. We're still sitting in 72 here in San Antonio. The aquifer is down two tenths of a foot to 673.7. In your pollen count, we got a laundry list here. A lot going on. Ash has jumped to the top now. It's in high category. Mold, juniper, hackberry, mulberry, all in there, but they're all low. We're tracking this front. We're going to talk about some cooler temperatures, some rain chances, too. That's coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. KZAD Rodeo Remembers is powered by the all-new 2020 Chevy Silverado HD. Many Texas towns have a proud cowboy past, but one town just south of San Antonio, the town of Pleasanton, has staked its claim as the birthplace of the cowboy. It's a claim that dates all the way back to 1720. Until the late 1600s, the Spanish didn't think much of the land that would become Texas. Then the French began to show an interest. So the Spanish decided to settle the Texas frontier by building the missions. How would the missions support themselves? 
cattle ranching. And where would be the first Mission Ranch? Right in between Poteet and Pleasanton, the ranch of the Mission San Jose. And what about those cowboys? In 1821, Mexico declared independence from Spain after a costly war. In need of capital and people, the Mexican government began to encourage foreign settlers. Soon, Americans were moving to a place called Tejas. To handle the herds of this new landscape, the settlers had to learn the skills of the local vaqueros, but they needed a name. So they translated the word vaqueros into English, and so became the first cowboys. Whether the first cowboy rode through Pleasanton is anyone's guess, but by the late 1800s, Pleasanton developed a thriving cattle industry. For countless cowboys, it became a main stop on their Kansas cattle drives. As far as Pleasanton's claim, well, there are two facts at work here. Vaqueros worked the first mission ranch and Vaqueros were the first cowboys. So maybe Pleasanton is the birthplace of the cowboy. Wow, look at that temperature, 72. How long is that going to last? Till 2 o'clock? 3 o'clock? Uh, yeah, yeah. we'll another three hours or so. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can. Yeah, warm and humid still. It was, it was awful warm yesterday. It was hot yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's man. Uh, yes, it's not going to last. This cold front is starting to move in slowly, but surely. This thing's just kind of creeping along here, but uh, it is just to our north. Places like Fredericksburg, Rock Springs, they've seen the front pass by. Behind it, it's not bitterly cold, but it is certainly colder, and we're going to see that cool air sort of funnel in and you'll really start to feel it tonight and tomorrow morning. There are a few showers with this too. So far, we haven't seen much rain here around San Antonio. We've seen some light returns on radar, but there's some dry air just above us, and that's basically allowing things to evaporate before it reaches ground. So not a lot of significant rain, uh, at least yet. Uh, as we look at the satellite picture, you see all the clouds funneling in. So we've got some high clouds. Uh, it's uh, the flow is out of the southwest in the upper level. So once this front moves through, we'll get that overrunning and that's when we'll start to generate some showers and some drizzle. Uh, but the cold air is there behind it. 50 in Abilene, 51 San Angelo, 54 Waco, 48 in Dallas right now, 60 in Tyler. So the front's just starting to move through there, but we're still in the 70s and 80s down here across South Texas. And then you look at the temperature difference here between Fredericksburg and Uvalde or Rock Springs and Uvalde. Uh, that's uh, the frontal boundary for you. And about a 10 degree difference there uh, as uh, this front continues to slowly move south here around Bear County. We're talking 70s at the moment, 72 at the airport, 74 Port SA, 76 in Castroville. Uh, wow, look at that. See that? that that's a giant bug. Uh, always yeah. fun. I'm going to move to this side. Yeah. Uh, Get away from guys. that bug. <laughs> Watch out for those things. Uh, 72 degrees. Dew point is at 65. East northeasterly winds at about 5 miles per hour. A lot of humidity out there, too. Uh, we're looking at wind gusts, and now we're starting to see those around Rock Springs. They're kicking up because that cold front is coming through. So you're going to see more wind gusts like this, especially across the hill country next couple of hours, then eventually San Antonio. I do think we'll see some wind gusts up close to 25, maybe even 30 miles per hour. This particular model takes some of those wind gusts up there around 25 at 6 o'clock, maybe peaking there around the 9, 10 o'clock hour, and then staying pretty breezy overnight. It'll be breezy tomorrow morning, too. So as you walk out the door for school or work tomorrow, a coat is basically a necessity, I think, tomorrow. You see some of these light returns. Again, some of this is not even reaching the ground, but we'll see more of this uh, develop as we get into tonight and we start to see some of that overrunning. Here's what the computer models are showing. And you see the uh, clouds and some showers tomorrow morning. And then the more moderate rain is probably going to be off to our north tomorrow. But still, I think we'll get the drizzle, the light stuff. It uh, doesn't add up to much, but it'll still be there. And then we'll get a secondary push of some colder air Thursday. And once that moves in, that should dry us out a little bit by Thursday afternoon. And the rain chances will start to come to an end. Still, the cloud cover will be there, and it will still be pretty chilly. Rain chances today. Uh, they pick up as we get into the afternoon with that frontal boundary coming through 68 degrees by four o'clock, but down to into the upper 50s by six o'clock and then 50 by midnight. And we've got that northerly wind kicking in 10 to 20 miles per hour. And then tomorrow only 51. That's it. 49 on Thursday and breezy and we'll get drizzle and light rain both days. Slow warm up Friday, a little bit warmer Saturday, still quite a bit of cloud cover. 30% chance of rain Sunday. We may not see any sort of significant sun until Monday of next week. Oh, wow. We're in for it, huh? Yeah, it's going to be a cloudy go of it. And next couple of days, it's going to be February-esque. Oh, yeah. winter-esque is what you're trying yes. to say. Yes. A bug better get down there from there before that wind starts blowing. <laughs> no kidding. You'd be in trouble.
Hey, the Spurs actually make a roster move just before they get back on the court on Friday. And a horrific crash. There's over 100,000 fans holding their breath at Daytona. Hey, so I thought the Spurs were not going to make any moves for the rest of the season. They did. They bought out the rest of the Damari Carroll contract. That means he's now a free agent. The official announcement came from the Spurs today, saying they waived the Ford. Now, according to ESPN, Carroll had signed a three-year, $21 million contract last offseason after Marcus Morris turned on the Spurs. Carroll still owed $2.3 million this season, $6.6 million next season, and just one point three is guaranteed in the third season. Carroll has only played in 15 games this season, with only explanation from Pop telling us last year that he's learning a new system and the minutes are just not there for him. The most points he had in a single game this year, six. That's after he averaged 11 points over 67 games last year with the Brooklyn Nets. Now he's free to sign with any team. It looks like Houston Rockets will be the team he ends up with. Hey, the Spurs resume their rodeo road trip this Friday when they travel to Salt Lake City to face the Utah Jazz. The Spurs have already beaten the Jazz recently, 127 to 120 as part of that two-game home win streak before starting the rodeo road trip. But so far, the Spurs have only scored one victory away from the AT&T Center. While the rodeo was in town, and that was against the Thunder in Oklahoma City before the All-Star break, they beat them 114-106, and that is how they will wrap up their road trip. So here it is. Friday, they are in Utah to take on the Jazz, and then they take on the Oklahoma City Thunder again. It'll be Sunday at 6 o'clock when they wrap up the rodeo road trip. After 100,000 fans went silent last evening at the Daytona track and International Speedway after the great American race ended with a horrific crash as the drivers were about to take the checkered flag, Ryan Newman led the field heading into the final turn in overtime, but he turns to the inside. Newman tagged from behind by Ryan Blaney. You can see he caused him to spin into the wall and then he just goes flying through the air. Now Denny Hamlin beat Blaney to the line by fractions of seconds to win his second straight Daytona 500 and the third overall. It's the second closest finish in Daytona 500 history. While Hamlin celebrated in victory lane, the crowd far more worried about the status of Newman. Here's another look at that accident. First careening into the safer barrier and then flipping over and then getting drilled by Corey LaJoy's car on the driver side crews rushed in extinguishers put out the fire and then they put up black screens to block the crowd's view Newman was then pulled from his car placed in an ambulance and rushed to the Halifax Medical Center just a few miles away NASCAR officials gave us their first update just a couple of hours after Newman was rushed to that hospital I want to provide everybody an update on Ryan Newman. Um, he's been transported to Halifax Medical Center, uh, undergoing further treatment and evaluation. Uh, we've been in continual dialogue with the race team and Ryan's family. And on behalf of Roush Racing, they've asked us to read a statement uh, to give you an update. And, and the statement reads as follows. Ryan Newman is being treated at Halifax Medical Center. He's in serious condition, but doctors have indicated his injuries are non-life-threatening. We appreciate your thoughts and prayers and ask that you respect the privacy of Ryan and his family during this time. We appreciate your patience and cooperation and will provide more information as it becomes available. That's the end of the statement. And then certainly on our behalf, we're going to continue to work with the race team and Ryan's family uh, to support them in any way we can. Um, we'd ask that you respect their privacy um, and going forward, we'll provide updates as we can. But at this time, our thoughts are with Ryan and his family. Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Monford has come under fire again after the Astros' so-called apology regarding their sign-stealing scandal in 2017. The apologies rang kind of hollow to not only fans but fellow players and to the compound. The matter, Manford delivered comments over the weekend that has incensed several organizations, including the Dodgers, who remember lost the 2017 World Series to the Astros. Many believe the Astros should be stripped of the title and players suspended, but Manford believes the shame alone is enough punishment. I think if you look at the faces of the Houston players as they've been out there publicly addressing this issue, um, they have been hurt by this. Uh, they will live with questions about what went on in 2017 and 2018 for the rest of their lives. And frankly, it's rare that for any offense, you have a punishment that you will live with for the rest of your life. Well, they're going to live with it all right, and they're going to live with it all season long. They have to answer questions everywhere they go. Plus, 
you got to wonder what the opposing pitchers are going to do. There's talk about how they're going to be plunking these guys when yeah. they get in the batter's box. But, of course, then the pitcher gets suspended and nothing happens to the hitter. So we'll, we'll have to see. It's going to be an interesting season for them. For sure. A filmmaker leading the charge, giving away hundreds of books to kids in our area. Why he says the effort is important. It's our latest edition of Creating Black History in the SA. And if your preschooler is a night owl, it could be time to get him to bed earlier. Why staying up late might be bad for your little one's health. New today at five, children and chores. For years, we parents have used this method to teach kids responsibility. There's a new app taking it a step further, helping kids learn financial responsibility by giving the piggy bank a digital upgrade. How they can earn and manage their own money, even swipe plastic and invest in stocks. It's today at five after Entertainment Tonight. Coronavirus concerns continue across the world. This as dozens more passengers aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan now have the virus. Meanwhile, 14 infected patients that were evacuated here to the United States are now being kept in isolation. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest from New York. Today, more than a dozen American cruise ship passengers who tested positive for the novel coronavirus are being kept under careful watch in isolation. Some near an Air Force base in Northern California, others at a national quarantine unit in Omaha, Nebraska. One patient was transported to the hospital, to the biocontainment unit because of a chronic condition. More than 300 passengers were flown in on emergency charter flights, landing Monday in California and Texas, the evacuation splitting some couples apart. The last night on the ship, I had a slight temperature, but it was gone the next morning. I haven't had a temperature since but I am stuck here for 14 days. Health officials attempting to keep the virus contained, but the number of confirmed cases continues to grow worldwide, and more than 1,800 people have now died. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo says the U.S. has designated $100 million in support, but said it took too long to get medical experts inside China to help fight the virus. We are hopeful that the Chinese government will increase its transparency, will continue to share this information. This is now a problem that is of global scale. The coronavirus is also having an impact on the global economy. Apple's now blaming the outbreak for a production slowdown that they say is going to lead to a temporary shortage in iPhones worldwide. Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. President Donald Trump's administration waiving federal contracting laws to speed construction of the border wall. The Department of Homeland Security said it'll allow 177 miles of wall to be built faster in California, Arizona, New Mexico, and here in Texas. This will also bring the president closer to the pledge of building 450 miles by the end of the year. The move is expected to spark criticism that the Trump administration is overstepping its authority. A 2005 law does allow the Homeland Security Secretary to power to waive laws to speed up border barrier construction. In the day ahead, a group of federal judges is holding an emergency meeting over concerns about the Justice Department's intervention into politically sensitive cases. That's according to USA Today. It comes as more than 2,000 former prosecutors and Justice Department officials signed a statement calling on Attorney General Bill Barr to resign. The resignation due to his involvement overruling the sentencing recommend recommendations rather for longtime Trump associate Roger Stone. Jury selection expected to begin tomorrow in the murder trial of Robert Durst in Los Angeles. The notorious real estate tycoon charged with murdering Susan Berman at her Beverly Hills home back in December of 2000. Now, his case became the subject of the HBO documentary The Jinx. Berman was expected to tell police what she knew about the 1982 disappearance of Durst's first wife. Berman was found dead from a gunshot wound to the head the next day. Durst's attorney admits that his client wrote the note that led police to the victim's body, but he also insists on his client's innocence. Let's take a live look outside. Ooh, what, what there it is. You know, the bug is gone. Do I so we scared the bug off because the bug knows we're going to have some colder weather and higher winds coming, right? Yeah, he's getting out of the way. Yeah, the, the cold front is, is getting closer. This thing is moving very slow, but it is through Kerrville now. It's just north of San Antonio. We think mid-afternoon this front will be through, and then we'll get some gusty winds with it, the cooler temperatures as well. You can see the spread across the state here. So 41 in Amarillo. Compare that to 84 
in Brownsville. So more than a 40 degree difference there uh, with this cold front and the, the cooler air starting to show up in Abilene, San Angelo, Waco sitting at 54 degrees. We're still at 72 here in San Antonio, so it's going to stay warm for another couple of hours here, but uh, that cooler air will slowly work its way in tonight. Take a look at the 24 hour temperature change. Uh, and you can see uh, there's some pretty big numbers here. So about 20 degrees difference on average with this front. We're, we're going to experience the same thing by tomorrow. Highs will only be in the 50s. Keep in mind yesterday we got up to 81. It was really warm. Uh, Doppler radar shows that uh, we do have a couple of very light showers showing up, but much of this is not even reaching the ground. And it looks like we can actually pick up on the front maybe right there uh, just to the north of San Antonio, as I mentioned, and just moving very slowly uh, off to the south. But temperatures will continue to take a dive. So by 2 o'clock, Corville will likely be in the 50s. We're still in the 70s and 80s down to the south. But by 10 o'clock, the cooler air moves into most of South Texas, and we're seeing those temperatures fall into the 40s and 50s tonight. So the forecast calls for 68 by 4 o'clock, 58 by 6 o'clock, though, and then down to 50 by midnight. We're keeping rain chances in there, and they'll pick up even more so tomorrow. We'll talk about that and how much rain we could see coming up here in just a couple minutes. Ursula? Thank you, Justin. You might remember Alandar Ma'at from last week's Creating Black History in SA. He's one of the filmmakers behind Walk on the River. Now, while the film is a great way to showcase black history in our community, Daphne Gray shows us he also uses his passion to instill the same knowledge in kids starting at a young age, this time through books. One thing that we hope to do with our Black History Book giveaway is that in every home there be least, at least one book about black history for the children and the family to read. Even living in Germany, Andor Mott has always dug deep into his heritage. In the military, he ran a black history committee and that passion followed him to San Antonio. What we're trying, attempting to do is to share a lot more and to open up and let our children know that there's a lot more history, not only nationally, internationally, but locally that we should be aware of and very proud of. For the past five years, he spearheaded the Black History Book Giveaway, working with the community to give out hundreds of books to kids. This year, his event kicked off the first annual African American Book Festival at the Carver Branch Library. This is what people expect for a library to do. D.L. Grant is library manager. I came out of this community and it was meaningful to me to see uh, people that look like me uh, go out and, and, and do things with their lives it made me think, well, I can do that too. So I was surrounded by people that made a difference, taught me how special I was, helped me to appreciate myself, and they let me know that I have responsibility to the people that had lived before me. With authors at the event and prominent local figures on the walls or in the halls of the building, Grant says bringing people together like this can really set a child up for success. We're not the wealthiest community um, in the city or, or in, in the country, but big things happen here. We want to make sure that children know that, that they have the same opportunity to succeed and realize their goals as anybody else. Because as we're reading, studying history, we're making history, and we want the children to know that just as these, we have these national known people, there are local people that have made history, and likewise, local people like yourself can make history. Daphne Gray, KSAT 12 News. The Carver Branch Library hosts plenty of other community programs ranging from story time and crafts for kids to yoga and Tai Chi classes for seniors. If you want to check it out, we have a link to their schedule of events on our website, KSAT.com. This is the third year of Creating Black History in SA. Right now on our KSAT TV streaming app, you can find two extended episodes of the series featuring stories from the past, last couple of years. And you can check it out on your Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, or Smart TV, and you can check it out today. Sometimes all it takes is just one small selfless action to make someone's day, and that generous gesture could be good for your health, while you might want to take some time out of your day and help someone else. And Disney World wants to add even more magic to its Cinderella castle. Details on the makeover, the iconic centerpiece is getting coming up in just a few minutes in the spotlight. Kids are growing up in an increasingly digital world and all that screen time actually could be bad news for their health. What a new study now says about the impact gaming can have on a child's life. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. 
A new study has linked a later bedtime with an increased risk of obesity for preschoolers. Researchers found that children who regularly went to sleep late had a wider waist and higher body mass index, or BMI. The study defined going to bed late as going to bed after 9 p.m. Previous research suggests a consistent bedtime routine for preschool children may be more important overall than an early bedtime. Other things that may lead to early childhood obesity include excess screen time, inadequate exercise, and bad general health habits. Almost 9 in 10 parents agree teens spend too much time playing video games, and that can lead to sleep deprivation. It can also strain relationships and lead to negative school performance. With more on that, here's Max Massey. The C.S. Mott Children's Hospital National Poll on Children's Health asked a national sample of parents of teenagers 13 to 18 years old about the impact of video games on their teens' lives. Per this poll, parents reported very different gaming patterns for teenage boys versus teenage girls. Twice as many parents say their teenage boys play video games every day compared to the parents of teenage girls. The responses were actually 41% to 20%. Overall, parents say gaming sometimes or frequently can get in the way of other aspects of their teenagers' lives, such as family activities, sleep, homework and extracurricular activities. This study is important because in today's world, children are growing up digital and parents can play an important role in helping teenagers learn healthy concepts of playing video games. One strategy the authors offer suggests parents try to play video games with their teens. Showing your teen that you want to understand their interest can help in communicating healthy gaming limits. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, according to researchers, being kind is a win-win for everyone, boosting health and happiness. That's why one group wants you to get inspired and make kindness the norm in your everyday life. February 16th to the 22nd is considered Random Acts of Kindness Week. According to randomactsofkindness.org, research shows feel-good chemicals flood our system when we do something generous that translates into sort of a helper's high. For example, volunteering has been shown to reduce stress, pain, and depression. Giving donations to others has been shown to reduce blood pressure and improve your heart health. In fact, the benefits were as large as those from healthy diet and exercise. So be kind. Can I buy you lunch today, Justin? Mm, you absolutely can. David's mad now. <laughs> I can only do one favor at a time, David. That was like, uh, well, so that's a half act of kindness. Well. I'll buy you lunch later this week. How there you that? go. Now you're hey, going to feel better. I got it. Okay. 72 so far today. That's our current temperature. Our low is 66, but we'll actually go lower than that, I think, as we get into this evening and tonight. So that won't be our official low. The averages are 68 and 45. Records are 91 and 19. 19 was set back in 1936 and no rainfall yet. There is some out there, though, and I think we'll get some over the next couple of days. We'll talk about the timing of this cold front coming up. Cinderella's Castle at Disney World in Orlando getting a makeover, and this is what it'll look like when it's done. Wow. According to the resort's website, that's what it looks like. The work will get underway in the coming weeks and continue through the summer. The timing couldn't be better because Cinderella, the movie, marked the 70th anniversary of its box office debut over the weekend. Ah, you see what they did there? Yeah, Justin Horn has two little girls, wow. and I noticed you were staring intently at that video <laughs> yeah. to, to find the difference here. Well, here's the good thing. Uh, they're both at school right now, so they, they didn't, didn't see, see that, it. <laughs> and they're not going to want to go. Wow. As soon as they see that, they're, they're into the Disney. Disney princess thing. Oh, uh, 100%. Yeah. Did you send them to school with a jacket this morning? Oh, good question. Uh, yes. You planned uh, ahead. They probably won't wear it, but yes. And the thing about it is you really won't need a jacket until this evening. So okay. the well, sort of when they get out of school. When they get out of school, it, yeah. it's going to be iffy, but certainly by this evening. Yeah, okay, so. yeah it's, the timing's kind of complicated with this front. It's moving very slowly, uh, but we do think that the cooler air is going to be moving in, David, as we get into the... The late afternoon hours. Here's a look outside. We've got uh, cloudy skies right now, 72 degrees. Dew point is at 65 east northeasterly winds at about five miles per hour. And that front right now is just out to our north and west, and it's just crawling. I mean, it's, it's going to take a little bit more time before it gets here to San Antonio, but it is through Kerrville, it's uh, through Junction, and it's through Rock Springs. You see the numbers behind it. So 50 in Abilene, 49 Midland, 44 Lubbock, 51 in San Angelo, 54 Waco. There is uh, quite an impact with this. And then uh, Rock Springs at 57, 
Fredericksburg at 58. Front is through there as well. Winds are starting to pick up. Uh, Bernie State still at 66. I don't think the front's through there yet. And we've got mid 70s here across Bear County. So certainly not to town uh, just yet. Uh, wind speeds are starting to pick up some. We've seen that in Fredericksburg. We've seen that in Rock Springs. And we'll see some gusts up above 20 miles per hour, especially as we get into tonight. And those northerly winds really start to kick in. And uh, the winds will be around tomorrow and Thursday, too. I think we could get some gusts up over 20, 25 miles per hour in some cases. So it'll be a breezy night and a breezy day tomorrow. It appears on radar, and I can't be certain of this, but I think that's probably the front right about there we may be picking up on. And again, it's just not moving very much, but it is trying to sag off to the south, uh, probably through Sister Dale, through Blanco, and uh, it's uh, continued to, it'll continue to move south. Uh, we do think that by tomorrow morning, you'll really start to feel the effects of this uh, with the colder temperatures and uh, the gusty winds. A little bit of rain out there from time to time. We'll see some off and on showers. Now, this computer model doesn't show it, but we'll also see some of that drizzle type stuff. So maybe not significant rain, but it's drizzly and damp and wet and cold. And by Thursday, we'll get uh, sort of a secondary shot of cooler air. So that'll keep things chilly on Thursday, too, and kind of in the same situation, overrunning drizzly type stuff. Uh, forecast for today, again, temperatures will fall off 68 degrees by 4 o'clock, 58 by 6 o'clock, and then down to 50 by midnight. I uh, look for about a 30% chance of rain. We actually have a better chance as we get into tomorrow, the drizzle and light rain setup. 51 degrees tomorrow, 49 on Thursday. Notice the overnight lows are in the 40s there. Friday, it's, it, we're, we're going to have a hard time warming up because the cloud cover stays in place. That'll be the case Saturday too. Sunday as well, mostly cloudy, a 30% chance of rain. We have another storm system coming in. And now just looking at the latest computer models, we may have another one on the heels of that that could bring some rain chances Tuesday. Ooh. So we're in a pretty active setup here, and uh, it, it is going to get chilly in the next couple of days. Not bitterly cold, but cold enough to where you'll feel it, and you'll want jackets and layers and all that fun stuff. So you're going to need your jacket tomorrow for sure. Yes, yeah, you will. For sure. Right. No doubt about it. It's kind of like the cold and flu forecast. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. <laughs> Red Book now offering a new service for those who are looking to cut the cord. We have details on the free option the company is making available to customers.